But then finally, I was like, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to scrap some money to, together, and I'm going to go to this pitch slam at the Book Expo America in New York. I fly to New York, and they have this thing where you can meet. They get like 50 agents show up, mm -hmm. and you have two hours, and you can sit down with as many of them as you can to pitch the book. It's as like many speed as you dating. Can. Yeah, yeah, basically. Right. And so, um, so I was like, okay, cold calling doesn't work. I'm going to meet them face to face. I'm going to pitch the book. They're going to say, hey, send me the manuscript. And then I can say in the cover letter, remember, we talked on Thursday. Bam. Mm -hmm. All of them rejected it. Mm -hmm. But we got a great uh, episode for you today. Yes, yes, we do. We're back with the incredible Steve by one of our, uh, one of mine. I don't want to speak for Steve, but th this We're Steve. not even allowed to say this. We're not allowed to say Steve, huh? What are you going to say? This is a story about how he got his trilogy, and obviously it wasn't a easy road, but it's a great, there's a lot of interesting things about uh, just the process here, and his particular process. I could listen to this over and over, honestly. I love this, I love this story. Rotate! Well, have you known since you were young that you wanted to be a writer? Is this something you stumbled into more when you were older? Or? Yeah, so I've been writing since before, stories since before I can remember. My parents tell me I've been writing this stuff, like writing stories when I was really small. I didn't submit anything to publication until I was like 30. Um, I, things might be different had I started earlier, right? I mean, who knows? But You like, started uh, submitting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, and I got really lucky. My first submission was published, and I have no idea. Yeah, that, that doesn't happen to anybody. <laughs> no, I don't think you got lucky. I mean, I just um, don't. I mean, I, I, based upon like what, based upon some of the things you've said, based upon what I know, uh, I think you worked for it. Yeah. yeah so, um, so yeah, things aligned well for you, but I just don't. That maybe think, that's the best yeah. way to put it. Uh, yeah, when you play with skill, good luck will happen. I hate to quote Jay-Z right now. When you play with skill, good luck will happen. Yeah, when you play with skill, good luck will happen. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very, very good. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, I do think I've, I've had the opportunity to ask a lot of people in publishing. So my agent is with a pretty high power agency. I've asked her, I've asked her boss, I asked my editor at Penguin, I asked the former publisher of um, Publishers Weekly. So I, I, when I meet these like high power literary figures, I keep, I have this one question I want to ask all of them. What other than luck separates like Stephen King and Patricia Cornwell from the rest of us, right? Like, I mean that like the breakout multiple book, multiple bestseller, every time they put something out they're going to sell half a million copies at like opening week or whatever. Um, what other than luck separates those big time bestsellers from the rest of us? And two ahead, every single one of them says nothing. Mm. Now, but this is where the persistence pays off. I mean, nothing other than luck wins the lottery for you, so the only thing you can do if you want to win is buy tickets, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you write the stuff and you submit it, and it gets rejected, and you don't take it personally, and you submit it again, and you, whatever, it gets rejected again, you polish it a little bit, you submit. Um, I mean, my path to these books was you write the thing, and you submit it to one agent after the next. It was rejected by, I have no idea how many dozen agents. It was rejected by two people on my agent's floor in her agency before she accepted. I got oh, rejected. Oh, so you did get rejected <laughs> so just by the agents. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, okay. it, it was... It how was many agents, how many rejections did you get? Somewhere between 30 and 40, I imagine. And through that, did you ever feel discouraged? And oh, yeah. Did you actually thought of quitting or just giving I, up? Yeah, yeah. So this is the thing. So it, it sometimes it helps to be an, the absent-minded professor, maybe. Um, so, yeah, I submitted time and time and time again and every time and then the, and the, and the, the rejection letters were so frustrating because they say like your writing is really good no thanks and it's like mm. so it's not that I need to Wait, write what? it better they, they said your writing is really good we're going to pass on it like <laughs> how's that helping you right <laughs> and so um, and I finally like later came to understand what that means so like this book so it's set in Japan. That's art, so vocabulary is already hard for people. It doesn't, 
I mean, the sad truth is it doesn't star any white people. That already makes the thing harder to sell. And it's got historical fiction and contemporary fiction. So, and some of the, so it's got urban fantasy and historical fantasy. And so basically an agent's going to look at that and go, okay, the writing is great, but I don't know how to sell it. What shelf do you put it on? Right? When you risk genre bending stuff, when you won't put yourself in a firm camp, I mean, so genre is invented by marketing, not by readers and writers, right? But they want to know what shelf to put this thing on. If you could leave them a question mark, they don't know. What shelf did right? they put it on? It's fantasy. Um, so, um, so yeah. Then finally, I was like, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to scratch some money to, together, and I'm going to go to this pitch slam at the Book Expo America in New York. I fly to New York, and they have this thing where you can meet. They get like 50 agents show up. Mm. And you have two hours, and you can sit down with as many of them as you can to pitch the book. It's as like many speed as you can. dating. Yeah, yeah, basically, right. And so, um, so I was like, okay, cold calling doesn't work. I'm going to meet them face to face. I'm going to pitch the book. They're going to say, hey, send me the manuscript, and then I can say in the cover letter, remember we talked on Thursday. Mm. Bam. All of them rejected it. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, God, what is this going to take? So it's like, all right, so maybe this is. I'm just not cut out for this. And so I was like, all right, screw it, I quit. And six months later, I forgot that I quit. And then the <laughs> next person I submitted to is my agent. I'm, not, I'm like, that's a, that's a true story. Like, I met her boss at that thing. I was like, okay, I'll submit it to him. He rejected it. Um, so now, at this point, I've submitted it to two or three people in her agency. And I was just like, okay, screw it. And then I get back out, and I start Googling, and like, who's looking to represent fantasy? And I send it to Cameron. Uh, my wonderful agent, and she's like, okay, send me some more. And ultimately, she signs on with me because she has really quirky taste, and she can sell stuff that she's passionate about. And um, so, I mean, now, like, I mean, she, if I refer her to people, I, I send, like, I mean, people say, like, hey, can I name drop you and send something? to your agent when I say yeah that I, I mean it also says like look if she says no don't be offended by that mm, right she has don't a weird taste like yeah like she is like they um but yeah I mean it's it's totally banal but sticking with it got my boom box suntan lotion waiting for action they say when you play they with say, skills good luck I have it let's go there's no writer that's not there I honestly believe that so if you have rejection turn you off from your dream or your craft then uh I don't know if you can call yourself a writer. You need to rethink your life choices, buddy! <laughs> That's something that every writer is going to go through at some point in time in their career. Um, I, I think it's unavoidable, you know? So if you're somebody that has a hard time dealing with rejection, I think you really need to get that kind of perspective that there's a lot of people that write, and most people don't even get to the point where they get a rejection. I think the one thing, the one thing that I think about with this is to try to put it in perspective. Is I mean, the, the conversation, this conversation happens over a few minutes, but this was like months and years of his life, and it's hard when we hear because we always hear the story, right, of the person that like I got rejected this many times, like on a stage somewhere, talking to a hundred people, or they're in an interview somewhere, and you're seeing them on the other side of it, and I think it's hard to really kind of appreciate like how rough that is. I mean, he literally quit. Like he said, I'm done. You know, I'm, I'm done. I quit. He gave up. Sometimes it's helpful like in stuff like this to just sit back and like think about that for a minute because there's, you know, there's going to be times when, like you said, you got to that point. So I think like, you know, this is the kind of stuff. And his book is a great book too. And some of the things like, uh, I know a lot of us want to be writers out there. And writers can be sensitive, kind of emotional people. <laughs> but look, the game of publishing is not for the weak will or the weak heart. Yeah, man, just wear those rejection letters with some pride. You know, collect them, show them off, frame them. Because those rejection letters will look so much sweeter when you get that acceptance letter. Yeah. And you'll be like, it's all part of the journey. It's all worth it. Yeah. So like and share. Because share is caring. And people won't know how much you care. Until they see how much you share. And look, I was going to share something real harsh with y'all about this, but we're doing the easier version well, right now. <laughs> what happened at the beginning, we had such a yeah. hard disagreement okay. about the, the direction of this outro. Yeah, yeah, I was going a little bit harder. About. I was going like uh, Eric Thomas. Check him out, motivational speaker. You have to believe! <laughs> All of Steve Bynes' stuff 
will be linked below oh, his, yeah. his web page. And check out the trilogy. Daughter of the Sword is the first Daughter one. Daughter of the Sword, okay. It's a tale from the, the Faded Blade. I've only got through the first one so far. I'm looking anxiously forward to reading the last two, but the first one was great. Five stars, two thumbs up. Check it out.